So you bought all of your computer parts, but don't exactly know how to assemble them all together. This instructional video should quickly show you how to build your computer from start to finish. Firstly, it's important to note that the parts you own are probably not the same as the one in this video, but from an assembly standpoint, different manufacturers only have slight variations in the assembly process. So, as long as you consult your motherboard manual, you shouldn't have a problem. The first thing we'll assemble is the CPU. It's important to note that there's usually an arrow on one corner and it should match up with another arrow on your motherboard. When fastening the CPU to the motherboard, it's important to note that you will have to apply a little bit of pressure, but that's just how they work. Next, we'll install the CPU fan. In this video, I just have a stock fan. When installing the CPU fan, um, I am applying pressure on the corners and opposite sides until in this case, I don't have to screw anything in, um, but they click into place, and you should be able to lift up your entire motherboard just by grabbing the CPU fan. Next, make sure to plug in your CPU fan to your motherboard, which usually is labeled, but if not, just make sure to consult your motherboard manual. Next, we're going to install the RAM, which is usually really easy. Just make sure you're installing the RAM in correct alternating slots if you have two sticks. Um, if you have four, then just install all four sticks, but in this case, I only have two. Now we're done with the motherboard for now, so we can take out the case. Notice there is a slot on the back panel for a solid state hard drive, as well as two slots for normal hard drives on the bottom, and an area to put your power supply unit. The power supply unit is a pretty easy install, just a couple screws. If you can't find the screws, they're probably somewhere in the case's box. Here I'm just placing the hard drive into its back slot and that can be fastened in with a single screw. The solid state drive has a bit of a plastic shell which can be screwed on before it clicks into place on the back of the case. Next we'll connect the SATA cables which should come with your motherboard which are data transfer cables and I'm just going to connect them both to the backs of the hard drives and we'll just leave them hanging for now as they'll plug into the motherboard later. After this then we can plug in the power supply, which should look similar to those SATA cables with an L shape, and those will just plug into both the hard drive and the solid state drive. Now that we're done with the hard drives, we can flip this case back over, and I'm going to install the panel which comes with the motherboard, which makes sure that there is a clean connection between the case and the motherboard. Now I'm going to place this motherboard inside the case, which should have screw stands already in place. Sometimes you have to place those in first, but it should click into place and then you can just easily screw it all in. Here I'm going to plug in the SATA cables from the hard drives and plug those into the first slots on the motherboard. Next I'm going to plug in the case fans into the motherboard, which should be labeled, but if they're not, it's always useful to check the manual on the motherboard. Here I'm just going to plug in the audio cable from the case and the motherboard, and again if you have problems, the manual is a great place to look. And next is just the USB ports from the case, those plug right in. After that, we can plug in the 24 pin power connector, which usually takes a little bit of force to put in, but it should click into place and you'll know it's there. The last thing to plug in directly from the case are the LEDs and power buttons, which are usually labeled, and in this case they're color coded on my board. Now I'm going to plug in the 8-pin power connector into the board, which is just like the 24-pin, but it's a little bit easier to click into place. And if you have a graphics card, they're usually pretty simple to install. Just make sure you have the side panels open, and it should just click into place similar to the RAM does, and you can screw it in on the sides. Another thing you might have is a wireless adapter. Some motherboards have them included but mine does not in this case, so all I have to do is slide it into place just above my graphics card and screw that in just like I did the graphics card. And the last thing I have to do is plug in my graphics card to my power supply. Everything should now work if you plug in the power supply and plug everything else into the back of the computer. Some things to look at when troubleshooting is to really make sure the 24 pin connector is plugged in and if it keeps restarting and nothing shows up on the screen, just try to reseat the RAM one more time and you should get things going. 